this knife is making me so mad. Cold steel, ugh, why did you have to do us like this? I don't understand because I do not know what was going on in the marketing meeting and the planning meeting for this Razor Tech line and particularly this Razor Tech design. Hey, design team, thanks for coming in and having this meeting with us. We're looking forward to seeing some of your ideas. We're really excited about this new series of knives that we've come up with called the Razor Tech. Sweet, I like that name. Sounds sharp and futuristic. Keep talking. Yeah, we really think this series is gonna connect with people. They're full tang knives with handle scales and polymer sheaths with stainless steel as the main attraction. Yeah, you're right. Those designs do look really rad. What type of steel are you guys thinking of using? What price point were you thinking these would come in at? Yeah, so we know the market's really saturated with those $100 to $150 survival knives. So we thought we would go with our 4116 stainless steel, make it in Taiwan. You know how well we can heat treat that steel. And then we could sell it at a much lower price point, well under $100. <laughs> I love everything you're saying except for the price. We're going to crank that number well over 100 bucks. Are you sure? That's kind of the whole point of using that type of steel. Listen, you're the nerds in the design department. Leave the business decisions to us. All right, man, whatever you say. Yeah, I don't know who's making decisions over there at Cold Steel for the price, but I paid $142 for this knife to get it in my hands to see what it could do, which is like $5 more than what I paid for my SE6 and about $30 more than what I paid for my Becker BK7, both made in America, both with excellent warranties that we'll get to today. If it was half the cost, 70 bucks, I'd tell all of you to go buy this knife because I have tried to destroy it. I've tried to get it to roll edges and damage. And I mean, I have beat on this thing like an animal and it is it just keeps on ticking. The handles haven't loosened up. I haven't had any sort of damage. And overall, yeah, there's a little bit of goofiness with some of the designing I'm about to hit with you. But if, if they were charging 65 to $70 on this tool, I truly believe that they would sell these by the boatload because I think it would be a great value. And if you need a stainless steel survival knife at a sub hundred dollar price point, I don't really know of another one that I could recommend to you that is as capable and as tough as this one is, which is kind of crazy. So let's dive in. Let me show you what it does have. Let's pretend that that price point doesn't exist for a minute. And we'll come back and circle back around here at the end. So obviously the first aspect is the blade itself. I mean, the shape and the profile and thickness and grinding, all of it is excellently executed. It's going to be 0.2 on the thickness. So it is thick, but the very high saber grind that they went with is excellently executed lots of X's there, with a great relief edge. I could do feather sticks with this all day long. This had great edge geometry out of the box, great executed drop on that tip, nice and thick and robust. I mean, I was cranking on this thing and it wasn't wanting to snap. I wasn't scared that I was gonna like break the tip on this. So you could pry with this thing, stab and penetrate with this thing, and it will absolutely get the job done. You, it has a 90 degree spine, so you can throw sparks with this easily. It can baton so well. Chop, it comes in around 11 ounces, 12 ounces, so right in there with like BK7s uh, and SE6s. So for that mid-weight survival knife range, it's excellent. So, you know, you're not gonna chop down a tree with this thing, but you can absolutely delimb and do, you know, smaller hacks if you need to with the blade. It has an ever so mild recurve that ends right about here, but it's so mild that you almost can't even notice it. And then it goes into that, you know, geometry of the, the blade with a good belly there. And that's not intimidating to me at all. And that's all done on a Taiwanese made German steel 4116 stainless steel. 4116 is like bottom of the barrel, barely even mentionable type of steel. It's very low end. Now cold steel in years past has been really good with their heat treats and obviously with this one. Um, because I could not break it, I could not bend it, and I could not get it to roll an edge. After thrashing on the steel, I mean trying to get it to jack up, I'm like what is happening? Why is this not dulling out on me? Okay, I've just done all the stuff that you've seen here. I can't find a dulling or a rolling or chip. There might be the just the beginning of one right there. I'm not quite sure. I mean, I'm really surprised to be honest. 
a lot of other steels would have dulled out by now in this kind of like 8CR13MOV. OS8 steel would have started to show a little bit of wear and I've been a little bit more paranoid about maybe it like snapping. So I mean, this is excellent for the type of steel, edge retention, but also toughness. It's just crazy. And the fact that it's gonna fight off the rust. I'm hearing humid Pennsylvania where, I mean, it's very, very humid and I'm getting zero rust. I've had this through several of the Southern states, including Georgia and South Carolina, and I haven't seen a single little pit of rust on this thing. So it's gonna fight off all of that rust and I just can't get it to damage itself, which is just crazy um, for the type of steel that it is. So, I mean, it, for this type of steel, it is well outperforming what you would think 4116 can do. And so this 65 RZR model, I will argue, forget what the steel is, right? Just the shape, the geometry, the grind, all that. This, I will argue, will compete knives like the SE6 and the Becker BK7 because it's 0.2 on the thickness, 90 degree spine. Neither of those other ones are gonna have that 90 degree spine option. High saber grind, so you're getting the benefits of strength with a saber grind, but you're still getting it high enough and a good edge geometry. It's not quite as slicey as the SE6 with its full flat, but it's stronger because of the thickness and the saber grind. And because of the swedging is less aggressive than on the Becker BK7, it's gonna baton better and it actually has a thicker robust tip than either of the other two. So for stabbing and prying, this is actually better designed. I cannot, I, I love, you know, if you've been watching the channel, you know I love the SE6. I think it's the best midweight survival knife to buy it, forget it, move on down the line. The, like, it's excellent. And we're gonna get to all of this in a little bit more detail because there are attributes. I know some of you guys are typing away right away. I know, I know, that's what's so, so why? Why are, are we running into some of the issues that I have alluded to already? Let's continue. Now it's gonna come with their Securex style of polymer sheath. Gotta double check, let's forget. Drainage hole, ambidextrous, so you can use that nylon strap like you know from cold steel for years. Got the button snap there, so you can easily put it on without taking your belt off. Large belts will fit on there, good snap. You can rotate that right or left, good thumb ramp. Boom, deploys easily. It's a little loud, but holds in there well. So zero issues with the tension and for the style of blade, I mean, I'd take that any day over just a cruddy nylon sheath. All right, so how about this handle? Obviously again, full tank construction all the way through with handle scales. It's some form of polymer, you know, glass reinforced nylon, uh, something like that. Ribbed, kind of like uh, think tops, Rocky Mountain Tread kind of style. They're uh, rounded edges, so there's no sharpness and they are contoured, they're not blocky. So, I mean, that's a really good sign. And there wasn't an over aggressiveness to the tread. I, I prefer more just like a, a, a more mild pattern. That's my preference when I'm using handles, particularly for like a survival knife, but it gives you really good tactile grip without it creating any like undue abrasions, particularly with no gloves on. You got a lanyard hole out the back if you want. Slight mild bird beak, so it didn't cause any sharp pains there. Good cut in. You do have a pretty far distance from your finger to the edge, like significant. Like let's do, let's say like over an inch. So you don't get as much control over the tool, say like an SE6, obviously that has a choil, or if they just brought it up and didn't give you this kind of exposed guard here. Now, again, for more of a stabbing, you know, reverse grip, that type of stuff. I mean, that feels very warm to the touch. I would have liked it just to be a little bit bigger. It's five inches overall and like 0 0.8 on the thickness. So, I mean, that's not bad by any means. I would have liked to just have it a little bit closer to the edge so I could control cuts a little bit easier up here for fine cutting. And it does feel a little stubby out the back here for some reason. So if they just kind of kept the fullness instead of tapering it down slightly, it's not a bad handle by any means. It's just not as good as just a big, nice, full handle. It's okay and definitely gets the job done without creating any undue pressures or hot spots. but it could have been better. All right, so competitive options, pricing. This is, this is the linchpin. This is the hardest part of this whole freaking video, guys. We're gonna use Blade HQ as the plumb line just so that we can get a decent, like, what is this running for? This is $142 over on Blade HQ. $142 for what you see here. Now, again, if it was $70, $69.99, I'd be like, freaking go buy that thing right now. It's, uh, 
if you want to, great. I mean, I'm gonna have links below for that as well as all these other blades. The value to me is just not, I don't get it. I just don't get it for the materials. So as an example, we gotta go, just to, for another cold steel as an option here, made in Taiwan, the Marauder, OS 8 steel, we would argue a much better steel overall, even though the toughness and so far decent edge retention, I would say OS 8 still will hold a slightly better edge from what I can probably tell than this steel. But I mean, that's a nine inch blade, Craton polymer, it's $76. Like, hello, just put the exact same price point on the Razor Tech, and I think it would fly off the shelves. I would be like, go buy it. Go buy it right now. This thing is, if you need stainless steel survival, go get it. Then if we go over and we look at the SE6, currently on Blade HQ, $139. Cheaper, the SE6 is cheaper than this Razor Tech. Made in America, lifetime warranty with 1095 steel, polymer ambidextrous sheath, micarta contoured handle scales. Whatever cold steel is smoking, I want it because they are high as freaking kites. And this is gonna have the lifetime warranty. And I know right now, I mean, I, I was on the phone with GSM Outdoors for a long time and I could not get through to anybody. I'm hearing that warranty is very difficult right now. SE is much better with their warranty if you ever had an issue with your blade. So you can spend less money, get the SE6 and have a lifetime warranty attached. Uh, the Becker BK7, I have my card to handle scales. If you just get the straight up normal one, $122 currently over on Blade HQ. And again, going to these handles, you can see here how the handle is a little bit shorter and smaller on the back, whereas on the Becker and on the SE, they're gonna be bigger and fuller on the back end. That's kind of the linchpin area as well back here on the Razor Tech. It's not bad, I would just have preferred it to be much better. The, the handle ergonomics overall are better on the Becker BK7 and the SE6 though the razor tech is absolutely doable and if it was half the cost it would definitely be worth you know putting rotation wouldn't cause like any major problems so definitely heavy hitting stainless steel midway survival knife but price point competitive option wise just no worry in the ballpark in my opinion so guys we got to land this bird wrap it up um uh, i don't really know what to say i don't really know how to end this video guys there it is leave comments below throw down Let's see what you guys think. I, I'm looking forward to hearing the comments. I hope Cold Steel sees this video. I hope they maybe rethink the pricing on this blade so that they could sell double the quantity um, and really give the market and give you and me, the user, an excellent stainless steel option for a price that I think is much more fair for the materials and much more uh, desirable for the pocketbook. And I think they would be just flying off the shelves if that was the case. So who knows? Maybe things will change, maybe they won't. But I look forward to hearing from you guys. I invite you to check out the other videos. Subscribe if you're not yet a subscriber. And until next time, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and I'll see you out there.